Okay, so no, this is not my A Storm of Swords book talk or my bookshelf tour because well, my best friend hasn't been able to get down here to film the bookshelf tour and I haven't read A Storm of Swords yet, okay? I will read it soon, I promise. It's just, I know. I haven't been in the right mood to read it and to read a George R. R. Martin book, you've got to be in the right mood, okay? Okay. Instead, I'm in the mood for a good, healthy rant. Now, I've done this twice already. Once at Voldemort. Once at the Targaryens and George R. R. Martin for the freaking naming system, which I'm still mad about. But this is a structure towards a character who is not evil, but is one of the biggest idiots I have ever had the misfortune of reading about. Now, it is still Game of a Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones. In both of those things, he made pretty much the same stupid decision. He dies in the second book as a consequence of it, and I was not sad. So, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. This is a rant for Renly Baratheon. Yeah, he's dead and I'm not sad. At all. It's for this pompous ignoramus who is the stupidest man this idiot okay you know why i am mad at him i am mad for so many reasons okay let's start with the first one Renly decides he's gonna make a claim to be king you are the second in line for the throne behind Stannis, you foolish child. And I will call you child because you are only 21. And he, he does this, you know, just by jumping the line in the succession and having no experience that would qualify him to rule. Okay, he was master of laws for what, three years? And in those three years, he did nothing except the bare minimum required. Um, he's ruled, he's been Lord Paramount of the Stormlands, and again, he's done nothing but the bare minimum required. Two, it, you are gay, I'm pretty sure. Like, he's just straight up gay. I'm pretty sure he isn't bisexual or pansexual or anything like that. I think he's just straight up gay. Okay, and one of the things a king needs to be able to do is to have children. Now, I don't know if there are potions in that world that can force you to get it up. But if there aren't, how are you expecting to have kids when you can't get turned on by your wife? Who, in this case, is Marjorie Tyrell and is a gorgeous woman. What are you expecting to do in this scenario when the question of children come up? I know it seems far off. You're like, I'm young, I'm only 21, and I don't have to worry about kids yet. Excuse me, by this point, Robert was already married to Cersei, and I'm pretty sure Joffrey was on the way. Joffrey may not have been Robert's kid, but the point stands. And Robert had already fathered several bastards at that point, who in a pinch could be used to claim the throne, so. My point is made. Alright? Stannis already has a child, Shireen. Now, I know Westeros has a history of not liking women on the throne, but the point is he does have an heir from his own loins. Then, and, and then three, you betray your brother to do it. Now, his reasoning as to why Stannis shouldn't be king is that he isn't popular. That is his own, that's the only reasoning he has. He's like, no one likes you, so you shouldn't be king. The reason people don't like him would make him a good king, okay? The realm has fallen into shambles thanks to Robert's rule, and I'm pretty sure you have no plans on how to repair it. If anything, you might make it worse. Whereas Stannis, I'm pretty sure, already has a four-point plan of exactly how he would fix the kingdom if he was on the throne. Because guess what Stannis has always done? His bloody duty. And that's why he makes a claim for the throne. It's not out of greed or out of desire for might. He does it because it's the, his duty. He is Robert's heir, since the children were, regrettably, 
not Roberts and bastards and Leslie just might cannot make a claim. So he is the heir. And you're like, he's not popular, so I should do it. Everyone loves me. Everyone loves you because you would be easy to manipulate. You already are being. Like, the betrayal is bad enough that he, you know, claims the throne over Stannis. But the people he does it with are the freaking Tyrells. The Tyrells. I don't, I know you were young when the Siege of Storm's End happened, but do you not remember that they were the ones who were causing you to starve inside that castle? Like, I know he probably puts a lot of brain blame on Stannis for being stubborn, but Stannis in doing so saved your life. Because I'm pretty sure, had the Siege gone the other way and the Tyrells won, they would have taken you to King's Landing, where guess what? Ares would have burned you with wildfire. Stannis saved you in that siege, and this is how you repay him. You work with the very people who starved you. <sighs> okay, so those are the points why he would not be a good king. He can't even be loyal to his own brother. How do I know he's going to be loyal to a kingdom? So, let's counter-argument here why Stannis would be a good king. So, let's start with the first one. Experience. Okay. So, he's ruled as Master of Ships for a long time. And, during that time, he fought in the Ironborn Rebellion. His actual battle experience when you were still being, a, I don't know, a child or training to be a knight. I don't know, you weren't in it. And guess what he did in that battle? He smashed the Iron Fleet at Fair Isle and made Victorian Greyjoy his bitch. What did you do? Nothing. He held the siege at Storm's End. I know this while he wasn't master at law, but he still held the siege at Storm's End against the Tyrells, and from what I've heard, it was pretty bloody awful, because they were starving inside the castle. And then, Mace Tyrell and his bannermen were regularly feasting out there, showing how much food they had. That constitutes to torture. And then when Davos saved him, by, yes, breaking the law and doing smuggling, he proved his integrity in that. He punished Sir Davos for the, for the smuggling, but then he rewarded him for being the only person to have the courage and the skill to save him and his family and the other people in the castle. And made him a knight and gave him a castle. And later he makes him a lord. A lord. Because guess what Stannis can do? That you can't. He knows the difference between being of noble birth and having good quality. Stannis isn't going to be blindsided by how many accolades a person has or how many titles. He's going to judge them on their merit. You, ha you friendly, have already proven that you are incapable of that. You've, got, you've already proven it. And honestly, after what the Targaryens, the more recent ones, and what Robert did to the kingdom, we need a king who can judge impartially, who won't be swayed by how much gold someone has, or how old their family line is. He will judge based on what is right. And that is what the kingdom needs. And you see it consistently throughout the rest of the books. Stannis, yeah, and Stannis doesn't care. He makes Sir Davos his hand, because Sir Davos is the only one who has the courage to call him out when he's being stupid. No one else has that courage. <sighs> <coughs> I know a lot of you are probably like, how do you know all this? Well, the truth is, um, I did my little research, so I actually know a lot of the stuff that Stannis has done in the books, even though I haven't read them yet. Um, and, like, here's a quote from you, from Stannis. 
I shall bring justice to Westeros. Every man shall reap what he has sown, from the highest lord to the lower gutter rats, and some will lose more than the tips of their fingers. I promise you. He doesn't care about the sadness of someone's birth, and we need a king like that. I think the last one we had was Aegon the Unlikely. He was the closest. And yet, he didn't... Mm. He's unwavering, and... He does what is right. He proves that when he goes north and he's like, the others are going to be attacking us. I need to have more priorities than getting the stupid throne. And yet he's fighting in battles and whatnot. And what has Renly done? When he got the Tyrell army on his side and he had most of the Stormlands, what did he do? He sat around feasting and having journeys. He was wasting time and food. Okay, something I know in Westeros, and Renly should have known this, but apparently it escaped him. Whenever there's a long summer, it's followed by an equally harsh winter. So what they should have been doing instead of feasting every day is storing the food. Because while the winter may not have been immediate, it would have been coming. Stannis would know this and do it. Because once again, he doesn't uphold with the primp and the foppery of the South that's so prevalent there. He doesn't care about feasts or tourneys and that makes him unpopular because a lot of people like those but it's practical and that's what you need when the crown is seven million dragons in debt stannis would manage to undo that you know he would Renly would probably just make it worse he's popular but he's got no brains <sighs> and then there's um uh what else Renly just would not be able to do it, and Stannis would. I honestly believe Stannis is one of the best candidates for being king, if not the, the best candidate at the moment. Now, Daenerys, I think, would be a fabulous queen, but at the moment, I kind of want her to stay in Essos so she can just get rid of all of the slave trade that's happening in Essos, because I just wanted to do that. Can she do that, please? She'd be fabulous. Tommen, I, he's a child. He's a little child, so I can't say whether he'd be a good ruler or not. Aegon has the same problem as Renly. No experience. So Stannis is the best candidate. But look, we're not getting nothing. And then obviously I have, you know, I'm wearing my Tarth shirt. I, I'm upset that Brienne gave her loyalty to Tarth to... Renly because he was the only person who ever deigned to be decent to her. Excuse me? Other people should have been nicer to her, and then maybe she wouldn't have given her loyalty to an idiot. I mean, she loved him, but I'm just... You know what I mean? And I could go on for hours about the monumental stupidity of Renly Baratheon, but I think I'll end it here. But the long and the short is, I hate him. Because he ruined everything. Oh, this was the other thing I was going to mention. <coughs> so you know how he got most of the army in the Stormlands, right? Well, that forced Stannis to look for alternate solutions, which gave Melisandre so much power. I think if Stannis had gotten the army that was rightfully his, <coughs> that worked this out, the only armies Stannis could have gotten was the Tyrells and the the Stormlands armies, the Reach and the Stormlands, because, okay, Dawn would never help a Baratheon, let's be honest. Uh, the Westerlands would be fighting him, and the Riverlands and the North are, you know, fighting for the North. And the Vale isn't about to help anyone, and the Ironborn have their own agenda. So literally, you can only expect those two to realistically answer his call, and they don't, because Renly, the jump upstart, decides to do it. And and the Tyrells are all about making Marjorie queen, and Stannis is already married, so they don't want to work with him. And I'm like, look, do you really want Marjorie to be queen? It's not the safest position in the world. Have you heard what's happened to them in the past? Honestly, I'd find a lo good loyal Bannerman and just marry her after them. Fix some of the problems in the Reach. I don't know, maybe marry her to Dick on Tarly. Just something else anyway so i just wanted to yeah i'm mad because 
Stannis has shown that he doesn't love what Miss Melisandre is doing, like all of the burning and whatnot. He doesn't like it overly much. He's doing it out of necessity because no one else is giving him any help. But there's a, there's a point in the Dance of Dragons when they're marching and then some of his Rahola fo followers like, we should burn some of the unbelievers to the Lord of Lights to clear the snow. And he's just like, most of my army are um, is unbelievers. Pray harder. And in the books, I get the impression he didn't know exactly what he did to Renly. I don't think he quite knew what Melisandre was planning. And he's suffering guilt from it. He doesn't like it. You get the point where if it wasn't that he had to do his duty and look after his daughter, who didn't know his wife isn't going to do it, he wouldn't want to keep going. Because he, he helped raise Renly. He gave him his own food at Storm's End. I don't think Renly ever realised how much Stannis starved extra hard because Stannis gave Renly him his food. He... He's not as manical as in the show depicts. He, he misses his brother and he wishes it didn't have to end that way. And I wish it didn't have to end with him killing his brother because, like, it, this all happened because Renly's an idiot. I mean, I guess it's, it holds true in that family. Or his Baratheon would be so disappointed. And so would the Duradons. This is not what Storm Kings are meant to be. Anyway, I've ranted for 16 minutes about one character. <coughs> I'll stop. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, like, leave a comment, maybe subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys!